sees every environment as a runtime environment. Please welcome DevOps veteran and JFrog Vice President of Technology, Edo Green. Good morning. Oh, great, great. How was yesterday? Amazing? Good? Great? Yeah. Yeah, I was blown away. I was in a few of the sessions. It was amazing. The quantity, the depth, uh, really, really passionate people about the same topics. It's always a true pleasure for me to be in a crowd with people that are passionate about the same topics that I'm passionate about. And in our case, this morning is around liquid software, like coffee, things like that. So without further ado, let's jump into what we learn and keep learning from 5,000 customers and ongoing research that we're doing externally and internally. Well, yesterday was all about products, trends, and today it's all about communities and how we are together going to share and gain insights from each other and from what we are learning in the real world. As we all know, in the last uh, GitHub report, there are almost 37 million developers around the world. And when we are looking at our community and the people that are sitting here, DevOps developers, site reliability engineers, we're seeing that it's not only growing quite nicely, but also as Stack Overflow last report saying, people are really passionate about this job. They're having high satisfaction rate, and they're getting paid nicely on it. So it's a nice trajectory, and I uh, really feel comfortable with all the people that are sitting here that are doing the same things. One of my favorite parts of being a JFrog is that we have a true visibility of what's going on in the real world. And that's giving us a unique perspective to see what is the output of what developers are doing and how those binaries flowing from one place to another. And it's usually helping us to separate a bit of the perception that we see in the world and what's going on in reality. And that's what we're going to do now and share with you how we are seeing what's going on today and what's going to be in the next 12 to 18 months. So those are the four main concerns that we found out. There are plenty more, and we'll share it with you um, later today and tomorrow. But what we're seeing is that Kubernetes, pretty young technology, five years, the platform of platforms. There are still many questions, many gaps. How are we approaching it? It's not always the case where we have the evergreen project that we could run and do whatever we like with it. It's how we are thinking about those legacy app and the knowledge that we did in the past, but leveraging this amazing capabilities that the platform is allowing us. Cloud native, and it's true that in the past we thought that you know everything will be in the cloud and it will be built from the ground up to it. There are many challenges and we'll see what's going on today with that reality. Hybrid and multi-cloud, again, how we're thinking about public and private cloud, how we're thinking about on-prem and what we are leveraging in the cloud itself. And last but not least, of course, security. And by security, I don't mean just the ability to check vulnerabilities and see what is going on in the code from the development phase to the production, but also about how do you thinking about compliance, how do you thinking about licensing, and we'll see about that. So there's these buzzwords around, everyone is doing it. Um, with a show of hands, who is having Kubernetes today in production for the vast majority of their applications? OK, so that's. Uh, Reflecting, um, in reality, we see that less than 30% uh, are doing it for real. Um, a lot of people are testing it, and that's a good sign, because in the next three years, it will be one of the most dominant technology in terms of container orchestration and what we want to do it. So if you are not doing it today, it's all good. But you do want to put it on your roadmap, on your plan, because it's definitely going to be one of those technologies that really, really leveraging and giving you much more capabilities, and much more freedom. Everyone is doing it. Everyone is defaulting to it. Um, with a quick show of hands, how many of you having their DevOps operation today on a cloud-native SaaS or PaaS environment? OK, it's a bit better. Yeah, yeah. So 50%. So it's not that you know no one is doing it. It's um, going quite nicely. And actually, in the next uh, few years, we'll see that the vast majority will be there. Uh, to me, it's actually a very interesting learning curve that we're doing some full circles. And you could see by the white hair that uh, I've been around the block for a few years. Um, and that's reminding me, um, you know, 
App Engine back in the day, 2006, so it all will be serverless, it all will be container, the abstraction layer will be there, um, but it will be with much more choice. And I think that's one of the uh, better environments and better opportunities that we have today, that it's not something that is detected for you, you could do whatever you like with it. Hybrid is just a stepping stone. Um, who is thinking about hybrid and do something today with this world of hybrid and on-prem? Show of hands. Don't be shy. OK. So again, it's around 50% that thinking about it strategically. So it means that it's here to stay. It's not something that's going to vanish. And uh, we definitely want to see how we could leverage it and have utilizing the cloud. And we heard yesterday that you could do amazing things. It's just a matter of if you're doing the right things with the cloud and harnessing the capabilities and the offering that the cloud offering us. And we see the trajectory is going to be much, much higher. So it's definitely something that we need to think about. How do we taking it and how do we putting it in our roadmaps? In terms of security, um, there's this, this, this perception that you know we're putting it just after we're finishing everything, throwing it and asking the CISOs or someone from the security team to validate and give us uh, the mark. In reality, 40% um, are integrating it today into their work, which is great. I just hope that quite quickly we'll see more and more uh, companies embracing it and using it through their pipelines. It's one of those things that you want to make sure that you're utilizing it from the early phases of the development, but all through the cycle and up to production. And you do this continuous testing, continuous deployment, and making sure that you have the level of security that you want to have. But the main question here is how do you don't put those gates but guardrails and allowing developers to run in the speed and the velocity that they need and want to run? And that's one of the things that we see more and more in the market, and X-Ray is just one example, but the others, that allowing you to run at that speed but have the peace of mind that you are doing the right things and you are leveraging the right packages, the right frameworks, the right libraries. One surprising fact that we found in our internal research was that only 30% are focused on third-party software. And as we all know, 80 to 90% of your software is basically coming from the outside world, and you're putting those last 20%, 10% on it. So I'm really curious to see, and I'm really hopeful that we'll see this number growing quite rapidly. Um, when we're talking about that number, is not just about the vulnerabilities that we might find in those open source projects. It's about the licensing. It's about the compliance that we need to apply in our organization, and how we are going to manage it and have it and allow the developer to run. In our morning run today, we were talking about how in certain organization, if you're bringing an outside uh, software to the company, you might be fired, which is very far from what other companies are doing. And that's exactly to the point of how do you managing it? How do you giving this visibility? So to conclude, we have four main concerns that we're all thinking about these days. And in reality, Kubernetes, it's still young. It's OK that it's not fully in production mode for you. But you definitely want to make sure that you are checking it and making the right choices of how to embrace it and how to put it on the roadmap. Around cloud native, in reality, 50% are now leveraging some SaaS or PaaS offering. And we'll see this going, growing quite fast in the next year, year and a half. Hybrid world and multi-cloud world, definitely something that we see it it's here for stay. It's improving your DR capabilities. We're talking with many customers that are thinking about the multi-cloud world. And even the on-prem, when you're thinking about it, you're talking about a VCP on AWS or GCP, and you're calling it on-prem. But in reality, it's basically a cloud. And of course, security, how you're doing ongoing security, and how you're making sure that you're putting the right gate rails, again, not gate, to allow your developers to run in the speed that they want. Few recommendations that I personally going to attend. Um, how do you involve to cloud native? How do you keep those 12 factors and making sure that you are doing the right things when you're shifting? It's a great talk by Nathaniel. If you want to learn more about pipelines and you're excited as I am about this new product of embrace and extend, please check Manisha and Avi. They are going to give a great, great talk about it. And it's really one of those things that I'm truly passionate about because it's letting you test the water without shaking the boat. And you could see the benefits. You could still stay with your CI world today, but 
leverage and enjoy these new capabilities. It's pretty amazing. Last but not least, I don't need to talk too much about Spinnaker. We have Andy here, an amazing continuous delivery project, both Netflix and Google behind it. And how do you merge it with Artifactory and gain and enjoy both worlds? So unlike Shlomi, I'm doing it uh, on time. <laughs> so without further ado, have a productive day. Thank you very much.